people in the seventh generation of three generations before yeah. three generations yeah. ahead, and you're always looking yeah. not at today or yeah. you're looking visiting colonial records <laughs> they all write glowingly how the land that they took up was just like parkland mm. like estate mm. back in Beautifully maintained. The trees grew in a line. Mm. And then the forest went in behind them because it was burnt that way. Mm. To maintain that pattern mm. and keep it open for the spears and the boomerangs and mm. that type of thing so people would knew, know what's where and when. Mm. And the grasses would produce seeds because they were perennial. You know. mm. Mm. Like oats, natural, mm. lady oats. It was just waving grassland. Mm. Mile after mile after mile. The explorers explained that. Mm. Well, they stored the grain. They dug in the ground, mm. put a cap over the top, dome shaped, mm. put a gutter around it with clay. The water had run off and run away. Mm. So that the grain wouldn't be, you know, infested with water mm. and swell up and be useless. And they go back and use it when they need it. So I think that kind of uh, Aboriginal agriculture that yeah. has been, I guess, just uh, actively omitted from history books. Oh, of course, just wiped it away. It's so easy. And it's it's parallel. It's kind of similar to the way that yeah. Aboriginal resistance has been. Yeah. Well, there were some that massacred Aboriginal people. Yeah. You know, um, I'm convinced after my study and research. You know, I've got a PhD now, mm. and it tells me that there were that many massacres. I'm prepared to say there's not one hectare of land in Australia that is not stained in Aboriginal blood. Mm. Mm. It's a big call, but it's true. Mm. There was a massacre right here. Wow. Right there. And it's so dark, the plants that are growing there. And we come back and we talk to it. They're dying. When people were massacred everywhere. The family were given this piece of land here. Mm. They came in, they set themselves up. Well, they were called the Walters. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's why this is called Point Walter. Mm -hmm. They cut a sandbar, they dredged it mm -hmm. so that the boats coming up the river, clinkers all being rowed. Mm -hmm wouldn't have to go around the sandbar so they were charging a toll so they this were actually making money right there this british family yeah yeah and they built the house there mm -hmm. they built the house just here yeah and before they did that they massacred the aboriginal people here because they wanted to feel safe because aboriginal families used to come here in huge numbers yeah annually yeah. and they were set up here in It feels, it feels a bit like you're on holiday in Turkey. Yeah. Well, I am in this. He just hearing that that I'm just on holiday in Turkey. It's really beautiful, and then I hear the story of Gallipoli, yeah. and and so I look, so and then to be, look back at this beautiful place, yeah. knowing that is yeah. like the. And I think in those terms. Yeah. And here in Australia. So, we're told to forget about that, forget about the past, forget yeah. the way back there. And what do we celebrate on the 25th of April every year? Mm. Something happened over a hundred years ago. Forget about it. Mm. They don't. Yeah. Oh, you, you'll get you see what I mean? a great way to yeah. offend people. Oh, God, yeah. Say that, say that. that 
Anzac Day is not the you don't even have to discredit you just have to say it's not the most important day of the year or you you know any um, yeah any kind of stray from the typical narrative and That's how we are, actually, you know? Well, I think people don't want... People, yeah. it's... it's. Yeah. There's been this... Maybe there's this feeling that things of that kind of horror yeah. will have it one day a year. Yeah. We can't have that. But it's it's so overcompensated. Instead of going, oh, we can't have it every day of the year, yeah. turns into we can't have it more than one day a year. Yeah. And it can't be more than one group of people... But it's it's so naive to think that a bit of that a place doesn't have kind of joyful and painful uh, kind of histories to it. That's right. And we as Aboriginal people, we live amongst them, you know, and we're spiritual. Mm. We feel it's still there. It hasn't been dealt with. Mm. All we're asking people is to say, okay, yes, that happened. We mm. accept that. Can we move on now? Mm. Guess what? Can we can move on. Connecting with people and having conversations that have a bit of That's emotion. That's why I always say it's dialogue. Yeah. Through that dialogue, you know, you've heard me talk about reconciliation. Mm. Aboriginal people have to reconcile with Aboriginal people before we can reconcile with anyone else. Yeah. So let's say that Aboriginal people reconcile. And now we're ready to reconcile with everyone else. So reconciliation is the key word. We won't be able to reach a point where we really agree and accept one another, embrace one another for the two different cultures that we are. Mm. You've got one mob trying to make the other mob the same as the other mob. You can't be done. Either way. Mm. But that is... By design, it can't be 